the Philippine Military Academy. Transformation is a way of life. Every year, young men and women, mostly fresh out of high schools across the country, embark on this unique journey. Starting out as civilians with raw intellectual and physical assets, they undergo a regimen that would decimate their ranks in the next four years. Those who survive do not just graduate, they emerge as a unique breed of leaders. Formally established in December 1935, through the National Defense Act of the Philippine Commonwealth, the PMA traces its roots to the short-lived Academia Militar, created under the First Philippine Republic in 1898. Under American colonial rule, formal military training was revived in 1905. An officer's school later came to be known as the Philippine Constabulary Academy, based in Baguio City. The PMA supplanted the Constabulary School and replaced its three-year curriculum with a four-year Bachelor of Science program. World War II temporarily halted PMA operations, forcing the advanced graduation of the classes of 1942 and 1943 for deployment to actual combat. In 1947, 10 months after the post-war Philippine Republic was inaugurated, the PMA reopened at Camp Henry T. Allen in Baguio City. Three years later, the Academy moved to a sprawling fort in nearby Loacan, fittingly named after the heroic revolutionary general, Gregorio del Pilar. The PMA would remain an all-male institution until 1993, when it admitted its first female cadets in accordance with Republic Act 7192. In 2018, the PMA synchronized its calendar with that of the Department of Education under the K-12 program. Over the years, the PMA has refined a holistic program for developing cadets in body, mind and spirit to become exemplary leaders in the military and beyond. The program encompasses character formation, balanced academics, military leadership, and intense physical training. The distinct nature of the PMA Leadership Development Program is etched in the traditions that guide cadets from day one to graduation. First-year cadets are called
boleh dijelaskan yang penting. Sanjan saya, Sanjan. Sanjan, di toko, di toko, di toko. Yang apa toko di toko? Kali yang kau beliku. the Philippine Military Academy. Transformation is a way of life. Every year, young men and women, mostly fresh out of high schools across the country, embark on this unique journey. Starting out as civilians with raw intellectual and physical assets, they undergo a regimen that would decimate their ranks in the next four years. Those who survive do not just graduate, they emerge as a unique breed of leaders. Formally established in December 1935, through the National Defense Act of the Philippine Commonwealth, the PMA traces its roots to the short-lived Academia Militar, created under the First Philippine Republic in 1898. Under American colonial rule, Formal military training was revived in 1905. An officer's school later came to be known as the Philippine Constabulary Academy, based in Baguio City. The PMA supplanted the Constabulary School and replaced its three-year curriculum with a four-year Bachelor of Science program. World War II temporarily halted PMA operations, forcing the advanced graduation of the classes of 1942 and 1943 for deployment to actual combat. In 1947, 10 months after the post-war Philippine Republic was inaugurated, the PMA reopened at Camp Henry T. Allen in Baguio City. Three years later, the Academy moved to a sprawling fort in nearby Loacan, fittingly named after the heroic revolutionary general, Gregorio del Pilar. The PMA would remain an all-male institution until 1993, when it admitted its first female cadets in accordance with Republic Act 7192. In 2018, the PMA synchronized its calendar with that of the Department of Education under the K-12 program. Over the years, the PMA has refined a holistic program for developing cadets in body, mind, and spirit to become exemplary leaders in the military and beyond. The program encompasses character formation, balanced academics, military leadership, and intense physical training. The distinct nature of the PMA Leadership Development Program is etched in the traditions that guide cadets from day one to graduation. First-year cadets are called fourth-class men or plebes, consisting of above-average youths picked from a national pool of qualified examinees. Plebes are jolted out of their civilian comfort zones upon their reception at the PMA. This is followed by eight weeks of beast barracks 
when they learn right off the bat if they have what it takes to imbibe military discipline. In essence, they are made to realize that before becoming leaders, they must know how to be good followers within the chain of command. Surviving that tough phase qualifies cadets for... Ladies and gentlemen, announcing the arrival of our guest of honor, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Please remain standing for the honors to the nation. Thank you. Please be seated. In a short while, the regimental commander will give a series of commands for the court to execute the Manual of Arms. Nang saan data? Sa kumbalikat. Starting with. Ah. Right shoulder arms. Sa kaliwang balikat. Ah. Left shoulder arms. Agap. Ah. Fourth arms. Baba. Ah. Order arms. Yasa. Inspection arms. Agap. Ah. Ah. 
And finally, order arms. The regimental commander orders the adjutant to account the troops. After receiving the reports, the regimental adjutant faces about, salutes, and renders the regimental commander, Sir, the Corps, all present and accounted for. Gino, mga talupad, tarito pong lahat at napag-alaman. Ipayag ang kautosan. The regimental commander orders the adjutant to publish the order of the day. Perik! Sakautosan Ang nakatalaga ngayon Punong tagapamahala Magat Arais Sa utos ni General Tuminis Mga pinuno Pumarap at pumagit na Pag! After publishing the order, the regimental adjutant gives the command officer center march. He then proceeds to his position with the regimental staff. As cadet officers from each battalion march forward to receive instructions from the regimental commander. Communications, orders and disseminations must pass through proper channels. This is a practice observed in the military profession, which signifies the importance of the chain of command. Through the chain of command, a more effective and efficient working arrangement results among men in arms. Now, approaching the grandson, ladies and gentlemen, are the members of the chain of command, the officers of the Cadet Corps Armed Forces of the Philippines. <laughs> Upon the salute of his officers, the regimental commander acknowledges, gives instructions, and directs them to proceed back to their respective posts. While inside the hallowed grounds of this great institution, the cadets must endure the challenging training. The military system characterizes and distinguishes the unique life inside PMA. It fosters punctuality, order, discipline, and respect for authority. By placing cadets in a uniform plane, it enables these young men and women to advance through self-reliance, initiative, and strength of character.
regimental commander orders the court to present arms. To present the court to our guest of honor, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Tanghal. Ah! The audience is requested to stand. Thank you. Please be seated. Mahal na Pangulo, anda na po ang mga talupad upang libutin. Military ceremonial parades have been established to bestow honor to the Philippine flag, our national symbol. Recipients of awards and decorations are also accorded this honor. This is followed by the inspection of the troops, if the reviewing officer so desires. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte was born on 28 March 1945 in Maasin, Southern Leyte. He ran and successfully won the mayoralty post in 1988. Since then, President Duterte has not lost an election. He is among the longest-serving mayors in the Philippines and has been mayor of Davao City for seven terms. President Duterte traces his roots to the Visayas. He spent his early years in Danao Cebu, the hometown of his father, and his lineage has also direct ties from Mindanao, as his mother hails from Cabadbaran Agusan del Norte, while his paternal grandmother was a Maranao. In 1949, when he was four years old, his family resettled in the then undivided Davao, where his father Vicente later entered the political arena and was elected governor of the province and served from 1959 to 1965. On 09 May 2016, he won a landslide victory as the 16th president of the Philippines with 16.6 million votes, the highest number of votes won by any Philippine president before him. His government's top priorities include combating illegal drugs and crime, promoting rapid infrastructure development, sustaining economic growth and making it more inclusive, enhancing peace and development in Mindanao, and reorienting the Philippines' foreign relations. Ladies and gentlemen, trooping in line before you is the President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. He is accompanied by Lieutenant General Ferdinand M. Cartujano, Philippine Air Force, Superintendent of the Philippine Military Academy, and by the Regimental Commander, Cadet First Captain, Dirk Caril de Valan, CCAFP. To support his goals, the government has significantly increased spending on infrastructure, initiating the Build, Build, Build program, raised the salaries of government employees, including the PNP, AFP, and other uniformed personnel, expanded existing social development programs, 
revived the soul peace process with the Moro National Liberation Front and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, implemented an intensified campaign against terrorism and communist insurgency. President Duterte also signed free college education in all state universities and colleges, local universities and colleges, and state-run technical vocational institutions through the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, provided medical scholarships through the Dr. Para Sabayan Act, and included every Filipino citizen in the National Health Insurance Program through the Universal Health Care Act. He also signed laws creating the Philippine Space Agency and the Departments of Housing and Urban Development and Migrant Workers, institutionalized a national identification system and the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program, raised the age of sexual consent to 16, criminalized child marriage, simplified the adoption process, and launched the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program. Our guests of honor and speaker have undeniably embodied the concept of a true leader, always soaring high to make a difference in the lives of our fellow Filipinos via acts of public service as humble servant leader of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Please be seated. Ang mga kadeteng, nakatakdang mamuno, humarap at pumagit na. At! At this juncture, we shall now witness the turnover ceremony of the chain of command of the Cadet Corps Armed Forces of the Philippines. Ang mga kadeteng namumuno, pantabay talong. Kalis. We shall now witness the exchange of salutes by the outgoing and incoming cadet officers. Mga kadeting, nakatakdang mamuno. Ugay kamay. Wala pa. No! Mga tinuno, ugay kamay. No. Ang mga kadeting namumuno. Ugay kamay. Ay. No. Ugay kamay. No. 
Ito pa kamay Ito Ang mga kadeting na mamuno Baba kamay Ito Ito Baba kamay Ito Ang mga kadeting na kadakdang mamuno Baba kamay No! We shall now proceed with the formal turnover of the CCAP chain of command. The exchanging of swords will start with the platoon leaders, company commanders and staff, battalion commanders and staff, regiment staff, this might be as simple as it symbolically looks. However, behind this is a load of burdensome tasks assigned to each counterpart. Finally, the regimental commander will officially turn over his sword to the incoming regiment commander. This symbolizes the formal turnover of the duties and responsibilities held by the outgoing officers. Ang mga kadeting, magsisipagtapos, kumarapat, kumagitna. 